You've probably heard a great deal about net neutrality and its importance and the consequences it'll have for your online experience, but what if you don't know exactly what it is? I mean, is it some vague idea of the internet being exactly the same for everyone? We all go to the same web pages? Does it mean that we're trying to turn cyberspace into Switzerland? No. In its simplest terms, net neutrality means that all traffic on the internet is given equal priority. Data travels along a series of tubes in little bundles called packets. That's the internet. When you download download something, the data is broken up into packets. The packets take the quickest routes they can find over the internet, then they're reassembled when they reach your computer into a coherent video or cat meme or whatever else. The way the internet has traditionally been set up is that all packets are treated equally by the servers and other equipment that handle them, regardless of who's sending them, who's receiving them, and what they contain. Much like cars on a highway, the speed limit isn't affected by who's driving or what's in the car. So the net neutrality neutrality debate has been over whether ISPs or internet service providers should be able to start giving certain kinds of content priority over others. For example, Comcast and Netflix had a dispute over whether Netflix should pay Comcast for using so much of their bandwidth. When Netflix initially refused on the grounds that Comcast customers were, in their eyes, already paying for the bandwidth, Comcast throttled the speed at which Netflix could access Comcast's network and their users that is to say the customers of both Comcast and Netflix started receiving lower quality videos and it was only after Netflix ponied up cash that Comcast restored full speed access. Well hold on a second Linus, isn't it fair that Netflix pay Comcast something if their service uses up so much of the available bandwidth? I mean doesn't someone have to pay for all the extra burden on the ISP? Well, that certainly is one of the main arguments that people who are against strict net neutrality often use. But there are quite a few arguments in the other direction that have really caused this debate to, well, rage on and on. One of the most important arguments in favor of net neutrality is that ISPs could abuse their ability to charge content providers. I mean, suppose Comcast wants to make it super easy to stream programming from NBC, a network that it owns, but then slows competing video services to a crawl unless they pay a hefty fee. In the United States, the internet isn't regulated as a public utility the same way that, say, phone and power companies are, which means that Comcast could be free to do this in the absence of net neutrality regulations. I mean, could such a world lead to a cyber divide between the haves and the have-nots? I mean, if the owner of some online startup wants users to be able to load her website quickly, will she have enough in her Kickstarter-funded coffers to to pay all the major ISPs? I mean, would the ISPs abuse their power? I'm not much for random fear-mongering, but I think that given their track record, there might be something to the fears of pro-net neutrality advocates about potential high tolls that ISPs could charge to access their tubes and that could discourage web services that can't afford to pay extra, potentially stifling innovation. But this video won't go too much further into that and is not intended to cover this topic thoroughly and in depth. It's more of a prompt for you to do some further reading. Then, if you feel so inclined, send a letter to your elected representative to let them know how you feel. Because no matter where you sit on the network neutrality debate, there's little doubt that it'll have profound consequences for everyone who uses the internet. Whether your thing is trolling B, reading poorly written or well written fan fiction, or watching videos of yours truly talk about dust filters or whatever. Speaking of filters, why not filter your knowledge? Or filter your whatever. Today's sponsor is lynda.com, the affordable, learn at your own pace online super site for honing your video editing, photography, music, business, programming skills, all kinds of things. lynda.com is great for expanding your mind if you're just a driven sort of person, great for learning new skills if you want to get a new job, and great for expanding your mind if you're driven to learn new skills for a potential new job. Okay, that last one was just the first two combined, but I think you get the point, and the point is it costs nothing to get a 10-day, no commitment, free trial and find out if lynda.com is for you. Just visit lynda.com slash techquickie to let them know that we sent you. Thanks for watching guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment in the comments to let us know if you have suggestions for future fastest possibles just like this one. And as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Really, subscribe. The button's over there. Or there. I don't know where it is.